purpose for you. And he does. Amen. I don't want to renege on that or, 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 uh, or bring that down to a lower importance. But in this man, he was getting ready to die. There was nothing he could really do for God. Well, he didn't know that God was going to put him in the book. Hallelujah. God used him even in his death. But this man could not give anything to God. This thief did not deserve salvation. He didn't even deserve the attention of the Savior. He did not deserve for Jesus to speak to him, to help him, much less to save him. Neither did you and I. He did not deserve for Jesus to do anything at all for him. Jesus would have been perfectly justified if he turned him away. Yet, in spite of all that, he promises him salvation. He promises to take him into paradise. And he promises that all this will come to pass one day. Hallelujah. So when Jesus responds to the man, he says, This day you shall be with me in paradise. Come give me a song, honey. Hey, man, hallelujah. Hey, now, hey, man, I, I don't know what, what was uh, in that man's mind, but when I, if I believed on that man and he looked at me uh, and said, uh, this day you're going to be with me in paradise, uh, I would be go things would be going through my mind like I have nothing of value, value to give to him. Uh, hey, man, I'll never be able to read God's word. Uh, hey, man, I'll never be able to, to, to uh, the opportunity to, to get, give back the money I stole from my victims. Uh, hey, man, and there's all kinds of things. He'd never be baptized. He'd never give his tithes. He'd never do any of that. But yet the Lord spoke to him and promised him everything. He surrendered his life to Jesus on that cross. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you imagine the scene? Amen. That greeted Jesus when he entered the place where the departed saints Hallelujah. Waited for the day that Jesus would return. Amen. Die on the cross and pay their debt of sin. Amen. There must have been rejoicing as Abraham and Joseph and, and uh, David and, and legions of others. Amen. Gathered around him. Praise the Lord for what he'd accomplished. And Abraham maybe said, Lord, welcome. Amen. Please come in. Tell us about everything you've done today. But tell us how you conquered death. Tell us how you're going to redeem us. Hey, I don't know. Maybe Jesus might have responded right there and said, no, you know what? We're just going to wait here a little while. I'm going to wait here at the gate. I'm expecting a friend to come through at any moment. I don't know about you. Amen. But I don't deserve the mercies of God. Amen. But I do know a God. Amen. Who gives me mercy day after day. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. What caused this man to change his mind? What caused him to turn from a blasphemer? into a believer hallelujah maybe it was the way Jesus was silent as they nailed him to the cross maybe it was the way he responded to the mockery of his enemies forgive them <laughs> maybe it was a sign over, the, over Jesus' head on the cross declaring him as his, the king of the Jews I don't know what spoke to his heart whatever it was God used it to reach way down into him and instill a belief in his heart that he could be saved. <laughs> I'm trying to encourage you tonight, to, amen, that no matter what the situation, God can put his finger in those loved ones' hearts, in your heart, amen, and give us encouragement and strength that they can be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. The case of the dying thief. We may never be able to solve why he turned the Lord. But we know where he ended up. <laughs> Hallelujah. God gave him a hope. It wasn't an ordinary hope. It used to be an old song though, that he used to sing. I haven't heard it sung in quite a while. It's called Wasted Years. I served a lot of wasted years. All these years were wasted that I spent out there in sin. Amen. With such a great hope, sometimes 
Christians should be groaning, wasted years. I could have been telling people. I could have been bringing people into this fold. Could have been telling people the same gospel that that thief heard on the cross. Hallelujah. What a Jesus. Lift your hands, would you, tonight? And worship this Jesus. Worship this Savior who died for you and I. Amen. Who offers a supernatural hope. Amen. That is presented to us in a supernatural way. In a way that we can't really even understand. But, but in the darkest moments, in a pit, in a prison, uh, Jesus can appear. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The man that wrote Pilgrim's Progress, John Bunyan, was persecuted for his faith. They threw him in prison for being a Christian. But they didn't just even throw him in a prison, but they threw him in a little three by three room, I believe it was. He's over six feet tall. Didn't have a way to lay down. Could barely even sit down. Couldn't even, I think they said he couldn't even, couldn't really even sit down in that little space. That's where he spent I don't know how many years of his life. They took away his Bible. They took away everything he had. And, but one day they, they, sent, they gave him a job to do when he wasn't in his cell. He had to go clean the outhouse, the latrines. So he went down in that pit and he began to clean out that muck and that manure, that human refuse. And in the midst of it, he found out that they were using his Bible for pieces of toilet paper. And he would begin to pull those sheets out, wipe them off, take them back into his cell, and read them. <laughs> In the midst of that prison, John Bunyan knew who Jesus was. You and I go through a little hard time and we say, why, Lord? Amen. We're only as strong as, as the faith in our present situation. Wherever you're at tonight, Jesus can give you the realization that He's able to save. And he's able to help you. And He's able to bring you out of your hopeless situation. Let's find a place to pray.